BSG have finally announced when we will see modular armor hitboxes, and today I'll be showing you what we know so far about this incredibly impactful change. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet, and I have yet another style to show you, which is the Forged Ember, which I think is awesome. I swapped over to the Ridge Wallet in Keycase a while ago and couldn't be happier. They hold up to 12 cards super securely and come in a ton of cool designs. We have a keycard holder in Tarkov, so why not extend that to your real life? This version comes with a cash strap rather than a money clip, but it comes down to personal preference ultimately, and as always, they block unsolicited RFID reading. One of the best things about the Ridge products is the build quality. The wallet is really light, but so much more robust than a traditional one and is literally the size of a card so it will fit into your pocket really neatly. Mine looks good as new after about 6 months and there are well over 30 colours and styles so you can pick the perfect look for you. Same goes for the key case, this holds 2-6 to six keys and my car key goes on a little ring at the back. After reviewing my massive wad of keys I only needed, yep, 2 of them and I still feel a bit silly lugging around 13 keys and 4 random barcode tags for years. The Ridge team are so confident that you'll be converted that they have a 99 day test drive period after which you can get your money back if you don't love it and a lifetime warranty if you do. You can get the best offer using my link and code GIGARIDGE at the checkout out to save 10% on your order, so that's ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to join the 50,000 strong 5 star rated proud owners of the Ridge Wallet. So firstly let's get the timeline out of the way, no we will not be seeing this in the next patch, or so they have said at least, as this feature is planned for the December wipe, so we still have one more wipe to go after this one without the new model in place. But we have seen enough on the latest Tarkov TV to start to understand the system, beginning with the new hitboxes. These are going to be back and chest, left and right sides, neck and stomach and left and right shoulders. We saw all of these armoured areas presented on both the NFM Thor and the Zabralo, which as the two of the biggest armours in the game should give us most if not all of the available armoured areas. These parts seemingly come with some armour inbuilt already, at least for these two armours, which from the breakdown shown in the menu is class 3 all over. After this we have four more areas that have the ability to take custom plates being front and back as well as the left and right sides. Of course at this point there are still some questions about whether these are all of the possible armour areas and whether some others are just not coverable even on the bulkiest armours. It's worth remembering that Lower Nape is a hitbox in the game right now and is sometimes hit through nearly any loadout as it can only be protected by one very specific piece of additional armour on one specific helmet, the LSHZ 2DTM Aventail. As for the plates themselves in the four armoured zones, so far both Sappy and SB plates have been shown in the inventory associated with the Thor, which stands for Small Arms Protective Insert and Enhanced Side Ballistic inserts respectively. This likely differentiates between the big plates that protect front and back versus the two smaller side hitboxes so plates won't just be able to go into any old slot. Given that Sappy and e Sappy are western pieces of kit, we also saw the plates for the Zabralo as well. These ones that were featured were the Granite 5A and the Granite SB, presumably the same idea here too with front and back versus side plates. Now here's where it gets really interesting. We saw that the plates will work similarly to how armour itself functions at the moment, with the associated stats such as durability, armour class, material type, light or heavy, and some stat modifiers. But as the Thor and Zabralo already have class 3 on the chest and stomach hitboxes by default, this means that we'll end up with a double layer of armour for bullets to pass through before they hit the player. Until it gets implemented, obviously we can't know exactly how this will function, so it remains unknown for now if this will in fact buff certain elements of armour or not, most specifically when shot in a plate. The plates will then be one of the, if not the most important feature of modular armour when it comes in December and will drastically shake up the economy of armour in general. They appear to require repairing independently as they get damaged, as typically the highest class of protection inside the carrier, which leaves the question of what a base Zabralo for example would cost without them inserted, and indeed what the plates themselves will cost. This also opens up the possibility of swapping plates in raid, so it will be interesting to see if these are allowed in the secure container or not. It's worth mentioning here that it's likely that not all all armors will be modular. I'm no expert, but some armors are designed in a modular way and others not, instead coming as one whole package, so those ones will probably function similarly to how they do now. We got to see some of the classics in action in the trailer, which really showcased how insanely different this is going to be when it comes. Two current favourites for their class, the Slick at class 6 and the Trooper at class 4, have extremely small protection zones in reality, which currently has no bearing on the actual coverage because there is no concept of getting through the holes in the armor right now. But that is exactly what this update will do, and we were shown a slick Altin user taking hits to the stomach hitbox through the side of the armour, and a killing shot to the thorax just over the edge of the protection 
protection zone from the slick. Likewise, the trooper did not protect our unfortunate PMC from a shotgun blast to the neck, which is going to be a big issue for these smaller pieces. Stray bullets in the wrong place could be fatal at any moment, which clearly will lower the value for armors such as these with a small profile. On this basis, larger armors with more coverage are likely going to be far superior simply due to the fact that they will have something over these hitboxes rather than nothing. Neck in particular could become the new head eyes, so using any piece that covers this as well might almost become mandatory. Otherwise, any old scav, player scav, or even an undergeared PMC would have a decent shot of taking you down if you get a little bit unlucky. Even class 2 everywhere would prevent lots of horrible things from getting in like buckshot, some shotgun slugs, and many 9x18 cartridges. Class 3 practically requires mid-tier rifle rounds or higher-end SMG ammo to have a decent chance of getting through, which cuts out almost all of the high flesh damage one-tappers that you might encounter counter. This is almost certainly going to rebalance which armors we typically think of as good. Early wipe in class 3, the Karasa is pretty average at the moment, but as one of the few with neck protection, it might end up being top tier because of the actual coverage that it provides for your PMC's body. Same goes for the Ceramic Class 4. This is currently one of the worst armors because of its durability, and it has no real upside compared to others with stomach protection. But as Class 4 is dominated by armored rigs which rarely protect the neck, this might end up being a consideration to use it instead. One thing that I did notice is the lack of armor under the arms. Perhaps this is the beginning of a new armpit meta, as all of the pieces in Tarkov only protect the top to allow the arms to move properly. Even on a Zabralo, there are certain angles and poses here that expose parts of the thorax from the side, so we're going to have to see. There is a really cool feature of the new system that I've wanted to be implemented for a long time that I'm excited about, which is getting rid of the concept of overall armor durability. We can still see that armor has some total value in the trailer, but given that different hitbox parts have different classes of armor now, this isn't going to be a useful number anymore. What it does do though, is this fixes the side effects of having a shared durability pool for all hitboxes on the armor itself. Gone will be the days of choosing thorax only simply because the stomach or arms can be healed in raid versus the thorax which can't, as now when a particular piece of armour is hit it will only take durability damage to that part. This means that we'll finally be able to use armors with arm protection properly, such as the Osprey, as taking shots there won't sacrifice durability that we really wanted to keep for our chest. I think this is awesome news, as arm protection can genuinely be detrimental to our overall survivability at the moment, which is obviously nuts, and I welcome being able to potentially prevent my arms from getting blacked out in every fight if I so choose. The only thing that I'm keeping an eye out for otherwise is the turn speed modifiers. Nikita has said in the past that these are going to go away, and I'm all for keeping the move speed and ergonomic go debuffs to balance heavier armors, but turn modifiers are still present for the armor plates, at least in the trailer. As I have discussed in a previous video, I don't think this does what BSG intends it to do, and it makes the game feel more inconsistent and encourages players to game the system using mouse sensitivity adjustments, none of which is immersive, realistic, or good game balance overall. I'm excited to see what these changes bring, and from a player perspective I'm particularly scared of shotguns, as both buckshot and slugs could potentially have bonkers one-tapping ability, but we're just going to have to see how it ends up working out. So next go and check out my video on the upcoming recall changes if you haven't already otherwise as usual a big shout out to all my patrons hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video and as always have fun in your raids